Okay, which choice most effectively to complete the statement from the table? Table suggests command of evidence, quantitative, and here we have to complete the statement. So kind of like logically completes the text, but we have to use data from the table to do it. So let's read. The Navajo Nation has the largest land area of any tribal nation in the United States, over 27,000 square miles in the Southwest. Because this area is so huge and its communities are located at various elevations, the people of the Navajo Nation can experience different climate conditions depending on where they live. For example, in July, so we want to show different climate conditions. That's the goal we want to support or complete from the table so what do we know at the uh we have temperatures in july so we have highs and lows so in july we have really and we want to show it across locations right so we can see we have lower temperatures here than we do here generally and that doesn't really matter if it's a high or a low it's still true the difference across those regions so that's what we want to find in the answer the lowest temperature for both cameron and teak okay was 65 degrees again we need a comparison a difference so one answer without the thing to compare to can never be the right answer okay b tuba city's average highest temperature is 94 that's inaccurate tuba city never had a high of 94 so that's not accurate to the actual graph Again, we're always checking for quantitative, for accuracy, and relevancy. Ramaz's average highest temperature was 83. That's correct, okay. While Cameron's was 99. Cameron is a different location, and it was significantly different. This evidence supports our claim. That's going to be right. D, the lowest temperature for both Ramah and Tuba City was 50. Well, that doesn't say anything. Those are the two at the same temperature. We want a difference based on location. C is correct. Okay, which finding a true would most directly support the student's hypothesis? Okay, so we want to find out the hypothesis, which is going to be right there. Let's figure out what's going on. As a monthly newsletter formed, as a monthly newsletter formed in 1969 by a group of Asian American students at the University of California, Los Angeles, Gidra helped raise awareness about social and political issues concerning the Asian American community on campus. And at large, the newsletter had an expansive reach for a publication of its kind, around 4,000 copies published each month. A student writing a history paper, however, hypothesized Gildra's influence cannot be measured by the number of newsletters published alone. So we need something else to show that it was popular and significant so what else that's what i'm looking for what else shows significance of the newsletter okay a the students who initially formed gidra each contributed no nope, that doesn't tell us the reach and significance in addition to covering current events, Gidra also, nope, that tells us about what they published about. That's irrelevant. Gidra was initially based out of the Asian American Studies Center at UCLA. I mean, it grew from there to big. That's possible. It's better than the others, but still not really quite the right idea. People would often give their copies of Gidra to others once they had finished reading an issue. Yeah, this shows that it's more significant. It became more popular. So really what happened is 4,000 was given out to a lot of different people and became a number greater than 4,000, according to this, which shows a greater influence. D is the correct answer. Okay, we've got a graph. So this is quantitative command of evidence, and we have to sort of fill in the end. We have to complete the text. Okay, so copper had been mined in the U.S. for thousands of years, but large-scale mining took off starting in the 1800s. This is due to several factors. Technological advancements in the miner, mining industry led to improvements in the production of copper. This helped the country keep up with a growing number of people wanting to buy copper starting in the 1890s. At the same time, the growth of the railroad system made the transportation of copper in large batches much easier. 
several states saw rapid growth in the production of this resource. For example, okay, so the claim here is technology and the infrastructure helped copper production take off in the 1890s. This is what we want to see when you see rapid growth from some of the states in the actual data. So where do we see this from the 1890s to 1902 to 1909? They go from basically 100 or less to 2 to 300. So it's not a difference between these two. It's actually just the rise of all of them over time. That's what we probably want to see in the answer choice. So A, the rise in copper production in Michigan slowed. No, that's not it. That doesn't support our point. Montana and Arizona produced more copper than Michigan did in 1909. No, again, it's not something about the differences between states. Fewer than 100 million pounds of copper were produced in Arizona. No, that's not showing a growth. I need a change. If I have a growth, I have to have two different time periods. Just like when we say a difference or a comparison, you have to have two different things. Well, growth means a comparison or a difference over time. So that's not right either. D, copper production rose significantly from 1890 to 1909 in all the states. That's our answer. Okay, I've got a table, so this is going to be a quantitative question. And again, I'm completing the text. So let's read and figure out what from the table would help complete the statement. Nangao and her team conducted multiple surveys to determine participants' levels of comfort in a room where the temperature was regulated by a commercial climate control system. Participants filled out several surveys several times a day, the surveys to indicate their level of comfort on a scale from negative three cold to plus three hot, with zero indicating neutral, okay? And to indicate how they would prefer the temperature to be adjusted. So they also filled out what they want it to be. The table shows three participants' responses in one of the surveys. According to the table, all three participants wanted the room to be cooler. So everybody preferred it wanting to be cooler even if their room was already pretty cool. Two of the three were kind of on the hot side. Slightly on the hot side, they wanted it cooler, but even the cool person who could only go one level colder wanted it cooler. So according to all three wanted the room to be cooler, which suggests the rooms were too hot, right? Too hot based on the survey because they did a survey to decide what levels of temperature should go right so and they each reported the same level of comfort no that's not true to the table even even though each participant's ratings varied throughout the day so we don't know how they varied throughout the day Okay, these are different participants, not a single participant varying through the day. That's simply not shown in this graph, so that can't be right. But participants re 20 reported feeling significantly colder than the other two participants did. Well, that's accurate. He definitely did. And he still wanted it cooler. So all three participants wanted the room to be colder, but participant 20 feels, I mean, that's, that's accurate. So I think that's going to be our answer. But participant one reported feeling warmer than the other two. That's not accurate. So one was no warmer than 21. So that's not accurate. C is the correct answer. All the other answers are just not accurate to the text or the table. Okay, I've got command of evidence and I need to support their conclusion. So here's their claim or conclusion it looks like. Let's read. Many scientists have believed that giraffes are solitary creatures preferring to spend their time alone instead of with others. But observations of giraffes and their behavior in recent years has suggested that these animals may be more social than we once thought. Okay, so we've got these contrasting premises here. 
For example, here's an example of them being more social. Zoe Mueller claim their conclusion that giraffes may even help each other care for one another's newborns. Okay, so what we want is an example of social actions, whether it's caring for newborns or even something else in our answer. Female giraffes have been observed feeding young giraffes that aren't their direct offspring. That would show it. That would be an example of this claim beforehand. So I think A is going to be the answer. Let's read B, C, and D. Confrontations between a younger and older male giraffe are frequently observed. Nope. That would be social, but it's a negative social, not something that was indicated in the text. Some female giraffes have been observed sniffing and licking their newborn. No, that's just how they deal with their own newborns. Giraffes are able to make sounds, but are rarely observed communicating. Well, if they're not communicating, they're not social. That doesn't help. A is the best answer. Okay, we're looking at a table. This is going to be a quantitative command of evidence question. And they want us to kind of complete the claim rather than a support weakens. So let's go ahead and read and see what evidence completes the idea. To monitor changes to glaciers in Switzerland, the government periodically measures them for features like total area of ice and mean thickness, which are then reported in the Swiss, gl Swiss Glacier Inventory. Wow, I don't want to say that three times fast. These measurements can be used to compare glaciers. Okay. So the claim here is they can be compared glaciers, and it looks like we're going to get an example. So we need an example of the Swiss Glacier Inventory using its measurements for comparison. The Gorner Glacier had, and which means we're going to have to have two things for a comparison. So always remember that. Comparisons, differences, we need two things in the answer, not just one. Sometimes wrong answers mention one only. A larger area than either the Fischer Glacier or, okay, so this is a comparison. Um, it has a larger area. They do measure total area of ice. And they do measure mean thickness. This could well be an answer. There's a comparison and it's about the area, something we would put in the inventory measurement. Okay. A small, well, hold on. But now let's check the data. Is that accurate? So. Okay, it's hard to see from the legend to differentiate these two, but this is Gordner. It's more the gray. So Gordner is a larger area than the other two. So that's accurate to the chart, and it's relevant. It's doing a comparison that we would see among area, something measured in the glacier inventory. So I believe A is going to be our answer, but let's check B, C, and D. Gorner has a smaller area than Fleischer? No, it doesn't. That's not accurate to the table. A smaller area than either? No, it's the largest. So anything that says it's smaller is simply not accurate. A larger area than the Fleischer glacier? That's true. But a smaller than? No, it's one versus the. No, that's not accurate. Again, not accurate. Don't know why I circled that. That's not accurate. The only answer here that's relevant and accurate is A. Okay, I've got a chart here. So we're looking at quantitative command of evidence, and I have to finish the statement here. So let's see what's going on here and what data from the graph will finish off that statement. By the early 1900s, the Singer Corporation, a U.S. sewing machine manufacturer founded in 1851, began to see rapidly increasing sales abroad, particularly in Russia, Germany, and the U.K. These markets were responsible for the bulk of Singer's overseas sales, but demand for the company's machines in other countries also grew significantly in the early 20th century. For instance, sales of their sewing machines in, so we need an example of another country growing significantly in that time frame, okay, right around the early 1900s. So our graph is all in the early 1900s, and the legend shows New Zealand, Australia, Philippines, Turkey. So these are all other countries. 
and we want to find the one that grows significantly. Well, hmm. In the early 1900s, this one starts growing significantly turkey, but then it falls off again. So I'm not sure I'm really going to say that. Australia and New Zealand, they look pretty flat. They're kind of just going across. Whereas the Philippines, that shoots upward in the early 1900s. So I think the best example for proving this point or supporting it here would be that we'd point to or mention the growth in the Philippines. They grew significantly. So the Philippines increased dramatically from 1908 to 1918. That's correct. So it's accurate and it's relevant. New Zealand were largely consistent. That's accurate, but it's just not relevant. It doesn't you know, follow the point that other countries grew significantly. Australia increased steadily from 1903 to 1918. Not really. That's not even accurate. They just stayed the same. Turkey declined substantially from 1913. That's accurate, but it's not relevant. Okay, so we have a couple not relevance. Not relevant. And a not accurate answer. Again, we're always checking on quantitative questions, whether it's accurate to the table or the chart, and then if it's relevant to the question. If you're both, you're the correct answer, like A.